For nearly 20 years, actor Julie Walters has been getting stuck in to rural life. A far cry from the industrial Midlands, where she spent her childhood. I didn't set out to live on a farm with a farmer. I never set out to do that. But even though I love a big urban city, I always thought I want to be living in the countryside. That was just like a little fantasy at the back of my head. Can't explain it. I love the feel of it. It's earthy. What are you barking at? It is an utter and complete contrast, you know, to, to working in the business. Julie's TV comedy performances are legendary. Two soups. <laughs> On the big screen, she shot to international fame in the 80s with Educating Rita. While starring in Mamma Mia and the Harry Potter films, has won her a new generation of fans. I think that our genes do hugely influence who we are. I was drawn to the countryside. So maybe there's some kind of link to way back. Grandparents and great-grandparents, and I hope we're going to be able to find out what they like to see how much they've influenced who I am. I hope there are a few skeletons. It would be a bit dull if there aren't any. Just I hope they're not too embarrassing. I want to be able to walk down the street. You know, I want to go into boots and buy my wipes and things like that without thinking, did you see who do you think you are? Oh, I'm they? <laughs> you know, don't worry. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just on my way to see my brother Tom. He's kind of the keeper of the family archive, if you like. And um, he's also always had a fascination with where we're from and the history of us all. Julie's mother, Mary O'Brien, grew up in Ireland. But in 1938, age 23, she decided to leave. Well, my mother, she was a very strong woman. And she apparently said oh, she was going on a little trip to England. But <laughs> then just didn't go back. And then she ended up in Birmingham. She got, got a job as a barmaid and met my father, who was a builder. And that was it. In six months, they were married. And there were letters from home saying, come home at once, from the grandparents. My grandparents, her parents. Come home at marrying a man in overalls. The couple had three children. As a young girl, Julie has vivid memories of her Irish grandmother, Bridget O'Brien, coming to stay. I don't think they ever spoke to one another, her and my father. It was all this. She wouldn't look at him, you know. And I have to say, she was a bit of a snob. But I don't know anything about her history. I don't really know anything else. Oh, this is Jehovah Witnesses again. <laughs> Hello. Oh! How are you? Oh, God's right, sake. thank you, you old fart. <laughs> thank <Come> you. <laughs> Look at this lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, Mum and Dad. I love that. And, um... Love her hat. Looks like it's fallen from the ceiling and just landed on her head. Absolutely, yes. I mean, I guess I want to find out more about Mum's side of the family. What's that? No, I actually haven't seen this before. It's a reference of her mum when she was coming over from Ireland to England. Who is that written by? The, the parish priest, Father McLaughlin. Oh, oh, I see. Ireland A.D. County Mayor, see. You, you read that. Mary O'Brien is a girl of excellent character. She is honest, trustworthy, reliable the daughter of respectable parents, and I feel sure that she will give satisfaction. She's the daughter of respectable parents. Oh, yes. I've never seen this before. <laughs> Fantastic. Do you remember that one? Look at Grandma Bridget. Me and you and Kevin. Oh, yes, respectability was such a word from our childhood. Not respectable. You know, they're not respectable. I mean... It... Yes. This snobbery and concern with respectability. Where does that come from? I'd like to know the roots of that. Mm -hmm. We don't know really where Granny, Grandma and Grandad... 
yeah. came from. Yeah. We don't know the history of Patrick and Bridges, do we? That's right, yeah. And they look at the photograph, they do look respectable, don't they, with their bowler hat and the ties and... Oh. She always looked proud. Proud woman. Mm. Have you seen this? Grandma's birth certificate. Oh, my God. No, I've never seen that. 1878. She was born in 1878. How brilliant. Where did this come from? She was born in Westport, so she didn't travel far. Island you're right. Island Oh, my God. Bridget. Anthony Clark. So her dad was Anthony and her mum was also Bridget. Anthony Clark, he was a landholder. That's interesting. He owned the land. We had no idea. Mom never told us anything about our great grandparents. This is going to be really interesting, mm. isn't it? I can't wait to find out about Anthony Clark. So I guess, well, I guess we'll have to go to Ireland. Julie's great grandfather, Anthony Clark, was a landholder in County Mayo on the west coast of Ireland. Julie's heading to Westport, a town near the parish of Eilinady, where her family were from. So I've got my grandmother Bridget's birth certificate, and now I'm going to see what I can find out about Anthony Clark. Right, Anthony. It is Clark. Oh, he's got an E. Julie is searching the 1901 Irish census. So I've put his name in and County Mayo. Right, OK. Head of family was Anthony Clark, Roman Catholic, farmer. How oh, lovely. <gasps> oh, I didn't realise there were so many children. Seven children. Gosh, Bridget was 20. She was right in the middle, my grandmother. I didn't know anything about th this family. And now there's more information, it says here. Oh, this is about the sort of house that they lived in. Exact number of windows in the front of the house. Four. So it's quite a substantial house. And so they had a proper stone-built house. So I guess what I want to find out now is how comfortable were they? How well off were they? What sort of farm was it? How, how much land? And and more about Anthony Clark, so I'd like to investigate a bit more. <laughs> 